Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, AJ Hoag, where AJ's more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's AJ with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. Hi, I'm AJ Hoag, the author of Effortless English. Learn to speak English like a native. I train you, I teach you to speak English fluently, speak English powerfully, speak English confidently. You speak English effortlessly when you commit, when you join and commit to my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Go there, join, commit, don't quit. Another quick update, business English course coming very soon. Basically, it's ready now. I'm just trying to decide when to open it. But the Business English course will be available probably starting next month, starting in, in uh, August, rather. I will begin with VIP members. You will get the first chance to get the Business English Conversations course. Live on YouTube today. Today, a miscellaneous day. Just going to answer your questions. Why? Because I am super tired. Why am I super tired? These two little babies sucking my energy. <laughs> I got very little sleep last night. Not much sleep. And then today was very difficult with the babies. Uh, I'm pretty tired. So, didn't have time to think of a topic. Uh, so, I just thought, oh, just answer your questions. And make it easy tonight. Easy for me, at least. <laughs> we'll be back again tomorrow with Brave New World. And then, of course, Sunday with the next part of our movie lesson, our movie technique lesson. So today will just be kind of a relaxed day, a casual chat, we'll call it. Casual chat. Casual live chat. So again, with the updates, I'm also going to put a fan on me. It's, get, it's getting quite hot. So you might hear a little bit of a fan noise in the microphone. Tell me if it's loud, if it's bothering you. I'll change it move the fan a little bit get the fan on me but not the mic might work right there okay so everyone hello now another update our gab group is growing fast we're now at 1100 people and growing very quickly and my personal gab is also growing very fast so great get on there get on our gab group people are sharing great videos great audios, great book ideas, everybody getting ready for this challenge. Me too with Japanese. I'm kind of building up like uh, I had mentioned before. You know, for the challenge, I have an actual goal, a daily goal that I'm going to go for daily, mostly listening for me. But I'm not quite there yet. I'm trying to get it, get figure it out, like how to find the time during the day. You know, I've got time at night, late at night. I've got a bit of time in the afternoon. I've got a little time in the evening. So I'm trying to figure out the maximum amount of time I can use for listening. Mostly listening for me. Reading is very hard for me to do right now because of the babies. You know, with, with, because I have to constantly be doing things with the babies, holding them, carrying them, feeding them, diapers, all this stuff. It's hard to really have a reliable time to sit down and read. But I can listen while I'm doing all of that stuff. So really, for that reason, <laughs> my challenge will be focused on listening, listening, listening. The other reason is Japanese is, is quite difficult to read, you know, compared to, say, Spanish for me. And so it's just a lot of extra work right now, and I just don't have it. I just don't have the time where I can focus on the reading. So... For me, it's going to be mostly listening, but maybe for you, it'll be different. Quite interesting, quite interested to start our challenge. We have just six days to start our listening and reading challenge. And I'm very excited for all of us to make some big progress with our language learning. All right, so let's just get on to the questions and comments. Of course, lots of people saying hello, Maristela, good to see you again in Brazil, and Asma, and Ibrahim Ali, and lots of folks. Linda Gilberti, it's interesting, Linda Gilberti. I know a woman named Linda Gilbert, <laughs> American. I wonder if 
her original family name was Gilberti. I don't know. All right, let's see. Let's get into some questions and comments. I'm going to jump down to the bottom here. Okay, Psalm Talk says, We need Tony Robbins' video technique. I asked you several times, please do more of the Tony Robbins. Okay, yeah, I'll think about doing that. Maybe I could do that. Maybe in between a movie, you know, we do a movie. And then maybe I'll do a, a week or two. Maybe I'll do something different. I use the movie technique, but I'll use like a speech or something like that from Tony or someone else. And then we go into the next movie. So I might do something. That might not, not be a bad idea. Okay. Monaga Wish 622 says, I'm very disappointed because I don't have enough time. I can't catch up with you every time. What can I do? I want to organize my time like you. Well, you got to figure it out. You know, that's what I'm doing now, too, is just trying to figure out. I've got, like I said, I'm very busy with babies. I watch babies all night long, just me. And uh, other parts of the day, you know, it's my wife and I both. And, of course, I have to sleep sometime, or at least I hope I can sleep. <laughs> and uh, so I'm having to figure, you have to figure it out, right? You got to find those pieces of time. It's going to be different times during the day. You know, if you work a normal job, then probably your morning is a good time, right? From when you wake up until you start work. There's a, probably a couple hours there. You, know, you can turn on English. Uh, and again, this is where audio and listening is probably easier to do to get more hours. It's harder to get more hours reading because you really have to focus reading. It's hard to do other things when you're trying to read. But when you're listening, you can do other stuff. So you can listen to English while you're taking a shower, while you're making your breakfast, while you're getting dressed, while you're going to work in the car or train or whatever, while you're walking, while you're exercising, while you're making dinner, while you're washing the dishes, while you're taking care of babies, you can be listening while you do all those things. So that's how you can find a lot of time during your day is with that listening, doing it while you do other things that you must do while you're shopping, while you go to the grocery store. You can be listening to English during all of those activities. And that's where you can get quite a lot of time each day, at least with the listening part. Now, with reading, it's a more challenging because you, yeah, you can't drive a car and read. You, now, you could do with the subway. If you take a bus or a train to work or to school, that might be a good time to do some reading. You don't have to worry about driving. Someone else is driving, so that's a nice time for reading. And, uh, you know, maybe if you have a little quiet time during a lunch break or something. I'm trying to do a little reading. I'm trying to do a little. I'm trying to learn some of the Japanese characters. Just, just a few. I can't really, like I said, I don't have a lot of time I can do this. But I'll try to maybe 30 minutes a day. And usually it's during the afternoon where I have a, I'm at a coffee shop. I usually have one of my babies with me. But I'll kind of, you know, she's kind of playing next to me. And while she's playing, I'm studying a few Japanese characters. And in this way, you know, it's very slow, but uh, at least I'm learning a little bit, starting to kind of learn. So this is how you do it. You've got to find all these little pieces of time during the day. And now some of you might have a lot more time, and that's great. Good for you. Hey, Fernando, I'm doing well. Thank you. Oh, what does LOL mean? <laughs> okay, LOL. You, you'll see this uh, in text messages, for example. You see it online. LOL means laugh out loud, right? So it's, the, it's just the beginnings of those words, laugh out loud. It means ha, 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 ha. So it's just like uh, having a laugh, like a smiley face laughing, ha, 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 ha. People will put, put LOL. It means they're laughing at whatever they wrote or whatever the topic is. It just means it just means laugh. LOL. Akror Beck says, "I respect you, AJ." Well, thank you. That's very that's very kind of you. Thank you. Jaeger says, hi, I'm Jaeger. What is the key uh, uh, to success? 
Uh, I'm not sure what kind of success you're talking about. I mean, you're talking about financial se- success or success with English or like just a very general idea of success. Um, so I think you need a lot of, you need discipline and I think enthusiasm. Or those two things together really help a lot so that you have the discipline to, to, to work hard when necessary, but you also have the great enjoyment of what you're doing which means you need a little less motivation and you do it with a great deal of passion and enjoyment. And I think those two together, you know, I think the, um, I've read, you know, I've read about soccer, for example, that the Brazilians have this idea of great soccer players, that a great soccer player is not just, is not only disciplined and technically good, but that a great soccer player also has a love of the game. They play with a kind of love of the game. There's an extra something, which we could call enthusiasm. We could call it passion. Uh, you, there are many words we could use, but you get the idea that it's, it's, it's something more. It's not just your work hard, work hard. Arr. You know, that's useful sometimes in difficult times, but when we have that enjoyment and that love of what we're doing, it lifts us up and gives us so much more energy for success with anything. And I think we do need, I think we do need that. Okay, uh, Kantik says, there are many old words in classic books. I don't know if the old or new words, I'm not sure if we use them still. Yeah, okay. I mean, they're still English. Don't, don't read too old, okay? Don't read like Shakespeare because that's, I mean, you can read Shakespeare if you like it. But, uh, you know, that's not modern English. But, okay, so let's say you read Thoreau or Emerson, so, which is about 150 years old. Uh, all the words in there are still used in English now, but they might be more academic. They're probably not. There are probably a lot of words in those books used by those writers that are not so common in speaking now. Don't worry about it, okay? You know, it's still useful vocab. It's still useful because you're going to see those words again, maybe in reading and uh, especially in even higher level reading, more advanced reading. So they're still useful. But uh, yeah, in terms of using them, you know, for just those basic everyday conversational words, you know, movies, TVs, podcasts, the really modern stuff right now is uh, will kind of give you an idea. But it won't be bad. It won't be bad if you use some of those words. It's just you might know some words that uh, native speakers don't know, or at least some of them. El Ciclao de Torno says, "I always listen to you, AJ." Need your help. How can I prepare for a customer service assessment interview? Customer service assessment interview. Any suggestions? I'm trying to think if I know what you mean. Customer service assessment. I'm not sure exactly what kind of interview that is, what that means. I don't know if it's a job interview or you're, it's something in your job already. But anyway, uh, you, you just you need to listen to a lot of audio about that topic and read if you can, articles or essays or books about customer service. I think that'll give you the vocab you need, vocabulary that you need for uh, you know, answering those questions. How can I cooperate with your group? Join Gab.com, AJ Hoag. Follow me at AJ Hoag on Gab, Gab.com. And just on my profile, you see a link to our group. Join the group. Say hello. That's all you need to do. Answer questions. You know, people put put questions on there. Reply to other people. That's the other thing. So we have a big group now. So just saying hello, maybe you don't get much response because there's a lot of people just saying, hi, how are you? You know, hi, I'm from Japan. Hi, I'm from Morocco. And maybe people don't reply so much to that. So you need to include more information. Say something about yourself. Uh... Talk about what you're listening to, what you're reading, what your goals are. And the other thing you can do is reply to other people. So when other people 
post something useful or interesting, you know, reply to them, say, oh, thank you for this. This is interesting. Share links, do all this kind of stuff. So you got to participate. Just saying hi is not enough. Say hi and participate. You know, you get to practice a little bit of really easy English writing. That's helpful as well. Yeah, Namaz says, I'll go to school after one month of the challenge. I will not have extra time for that. Homework lessons. And homework lessons, tiredness, they're tough. What to do? <laughs> Depends on your priorities, right? What's most important to you. But, um, you know, I don't know. I didn't find school that tough. My, I'll be just totally honest with you. So when I was in school, meaning university and grad school, I still had felt like I had a huge amount of time. It just felt easy compared to working. <laughs> Very easy. Um, but, you know, I don't know. I was probably studying easy topics. I was not, I was not in any kind of hard science or engineering, nothing like that. So anyway, um, you know, maybe you cut back on your schoolwork a little bit. You don't have to get an A in everything. Cut back on your school a little bit, especially classes that are not important to you, that you don't care about that much. Just do the minimum so you pass the course and use some extra time for your English. That's what I would do. Era says, I'm thinking of doing research about Brave New World and Animal Farm. Interesting. What's the main idea I can research about? Uh, mind control, propaganda techniques. Those are kind of the main themes. Uh, how to control people with pain, fear, or pleasure. You know, Brave New World, people are not controlled with fear so much. It's more they're controlled with pleasure and distraction. And, of course, both of these books are focused on mind control techniques. How do you control people mentally? Oh, Faisal says, will it impact our pronunciation if we're listening to English from a couple of native speakers? If yes, will the impact be positive or negative? Well, as long as they're native speakers, it'll be positive. It's fine. Totally fine. You don't have to just do one speaker. You can do many. I'm going to open a window. I'm getting hot. One sec. Hot, hot, hot. Summer. So, yeah, as long as it, the native speakers, uh, you, that's fine. You can do more than one native speaker. Wow, now here's a nice one. Dario the third says, I'm doing 10 hours per day. Mm, now there you go. You're going to beat me. I can't quite do 10. <laughs> I, I'm struggling. I'm, I'm kind of targeting eight. Eight hours a day is my goal. I'm intermediate. Is it possibly fluent in six months? Thanks for your job. I would think 10 hours a day, yes. You're starting an intermediate. You're doing 10 hours a day. If those are really good focused hours, you know, you're not distracted during all that time, then I would think, yes, you'd make very good progress and you should be, you know, conversationally fluent. Yes, I think so. Especially now, you know, eventually you probably will want to start doing some speaking too. You'll be ready. You might need to then at the end of the challenge. What we're going to do, I think, is at the end of the challenge, this challenge is reading and listening. And then I think the next challenge, we'll probably do another one where we'll do, I don't know, maybe a shorter one, three months or two months even, and we'll do a speaking challenge. And that's just to kind of, you know, get used to speaking, get more comfortable speaking, kind of take the listening we, and all the reading and listening and then try to use some of it. And, you know, it'll probably do the same thing. We'll just uh, track, we'll record how many hours per week we're speaking. Now, that will probably be much less, certainly for me, it'll be much less than the listening because I still think the listening is the most important. But uh, it might be nice. Maybe we'll do a listening and speaking challenge. Maybe we'll do two again So, because I still think listening is very important, but maybe we'll add speaking in there. So those of you who want to really, you feel like you're ready, you've done a lot of listening. I mean, like Dario, after six months, 10 hours a day, 
you're probably ready then to jump into some heavy speaking. So you're going to do great. If 10 hours a day, you're going to be great. You're very nice. Uh, Michael says, are you planning to visit Moscow someday? I would like to. I would like to visit Russia. We'll see. Yeah, like Nora, for example. Today, while cooking, I listened to How to Create Good Habits, one of my favorite podcasts. There you go. Right? You're cooking. you got to make your meals. But why not listen to English at the same time? Listen to a nice podcast. Great. <laughs> Ali says, what happened to your hair? I cut it. I was hot. Summer, I often will shave my head. And in winter, you often see I'll have a big beard and my hair gets longer and I kind of get a beard because I'm cold. <laughs> Jose says, uh, hi, teacher. I live in Brazil. I'm learning a lot with your job. I've been improved a lot. God bless you. Well, thank you very much, Jose. That's nice. Thank you. Faisal says, it is said, this is like a saying, I guess, asking questions is a sign of a confused person. What do you think? Well, confused or curious, right? I think asking questions is a good thing, usually. It's better to ask questions. Um, it's also good to observe, right? But I think a sign of a curious mind, usually. Which grammar is best for high school students? I guess you're asking about grammar book. I, honestly, I think uh, high school students should just ignore those grammar books. And it's, it's I think high school language, I mean, let's just say English, is taught completely backwards. And what they should be doing is doing a huge no amount of stories like TPRS, mini stories, and, you know, other stuff too, little, little nice little easy books in English and, you know, all the things we do, but just easier because they're beginning. And they should be doing that for four years. And then at the end of the four years, they would have a huge amount of listening. And, you know, they could also do some speaking where they tell the stories to each other. And they would still learn. You can, with those stories, you can teach the grammar. You can teach the present and the past and, you know, all those uh, grammar um, those verb tenses and other grammar as well. You can teach with stories without any grammar book, without even talking about the grammar directly. It's just indirect. You know, sometimes people say, uh, you know, that I, that I, they think I say, you know, grammar is bad. Don't learn grammar. But that, I never say that. I say, don't study grammar rules. Don't try to memorize grammar rules. Don't, or grammar textbooks, because that's just trying this abstract analyzing it just doesn't work it doesn't work but you d you definitely learn grammar but you learn it naturally intuitively you know from real stories and conversations and sentences and phrases so you still do of course you're learning grammar and of course the grammar is important but it's how you learn it, right? It's, it's learning it that natural way where your brain kind of figures it out instead of trying to remember what, what is the present perfect progressive. I mean, even I have to think about it. What is the present perfect progressive? I, like, uh, what is it? I, I don't know. I have to think. Present yeah, perfect is have. Uh, progressive is ing. You know, I, I can kind of remember it, but I need like a, couple, a few seconds to think about it. So you obviously don't have that time. <laughs> so I, I, I would just say none. <laughs> okay, here's an interesting question. I said I'd answer any questions today, so here you go. Not about English at all. Could you talk about J Japanese fermented food? What is your perspective? Ah, well, hmm, there's natto, which is fermented soybeans. Now, from what I've read, it's very healthy. It has a nutrient called K2, which is really good for its anti-disease, anti-cancer, good for your bones, lots of good things. Um, now, Japanese kind of have the idea that natto is really like a, that foreigners hate it. All foreigners hate it. I don't hate it. 
I don't I, I don't like it. It's some people say the smell is bad, but I don't I don't find the smells very bad. It's just the it's very slimy. It's you know slimy is kind of that smooth and watery and kind of I don't know. It's that feeling of it that it's not my favorite. <laughs> okay, it's uh, it's okay. I mean I can eat it. I have eaten it, but it I don't usually eat it. I'm trying to think of other fermented foods. There are a few like other fermented foods I've had kind of a like a seaweed thing. I, I don't know the name of it. It's not bad. Probably my favorite fermented food, though, is Korean. I like kimchi. I like kimchi. That's fermented cabbage, but it has red chilies, so it's kind of spicy a bit. Uh, but they have it in Japan. Kimchi is also quite available in Japan also, and that's my favorite one. But that's Korean. Back when I asked my teacher how important grammar is in our life, he got angry at me. <laughs> yeah. See, I'll, you know, this, here's the deal. You know, why do so many English teachers focus on grammar, grammar, grammar in the textbooks? Well, if they're not native speakers, well, even if they're native speakers, the, the reason they do it is easy. It's easy for them because they can, instead of teaching the language or motivating you to learn the language, they can just, you know, talk about these abstract ideas, right? These rules. Okay, so today we study the past tense, the simple past. And then they just read from the textbook a bunch of rules and about the, the simple past. And you add D and sometimes you add ED and sometimes they're irregular and blah, 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 blah. And they just talk, 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 talk. And just, just kind of reading from the book and then give you a test. If they're not native speakers, see, this is good for them because maybe they're not really very confident about speaking English. So they can actually talk about all this stuff in their own language. So it's easy for them. And even the native speakers, it's easy for them too because they're just reading from the textbook. Now, you know, teaching with stories is much better, you know, like the TPRS technique, things like that. It's much better for the students, but it does take more energy from the teacher it's more difficult for the teacher you need you know to you have to think of this the story every day a new story you have to learn kind of the technique to do it well and you have to be have some energy every day and be entertaining so that the story's not boring for the students and all of that is more work it takes a lot more work and a lot more energy from the teacher and so a lot of teachers are tired and lazy or they're a lot of them are working too many hours and teaching too many hours and they're just tired and a lot of them have no choice honestly a lot of them the boss the school tells them you must follow this textbook you must do this so all those reasons here's another one my friend texted to me brb what does it mean i don't know any of you know what that means? I don't know. Tarawan. I know 7,000 words. I can speak a little English. What's your advice for me? Do our challenge. Do our listening and reading challenge. Do it. Four months, man. Four months. As many hours as you can. Listening and or reading. You can make a big jump in four months. That's what I recommend. After that... Then try doing some more speaking. Ah, uh, yeah. Abraham, a lot of people ask me to do this. I just don't... I could maybe do Walden. I love the book. It'd be great if you do Walden after your money or, or your life. I know it's difficult, but if you do it, it'll give us the opportunity to read and understand the book deeply. I might do Walden at some point. It's a, it's a fantastic book. One of my favorites. Um, do you know Ma Mairo Vergara? I don't know him. Sorry. So I have no opinion.
I'm a blogger. I'd like to talk to you personally on Skype for your channel. Uh, you know, message me on Gab. Maybe I can do an interview or something if you want to. That'd be fine. Oh, BRB. There you go. Be right back. Thank you very much. And, oh, and MG also. Has, uh, uh, let's, uh, well, uh, all you guys know this. <laughs> Three people in a row responded to that. BRB means be right back. So I'll be right back. I'm coming back in a minute. How to strengthen my writing, Wazma asks. Well, actually, someone just recently posted a link on Gab about, it's called Morning Pages. Morning Pages. Uh, what's her name? Julie Cameron, I believe, wrote the book. But anyway, there's a website she has where it's, it's like it's writing practice and you do it every morning. This is the idea. And I've done, I did it myself. I actually read her book quite a long time ago when I wanted to improve my own writing in, in English. And... I did. I followed her system, which includes this kind of journal writing. And the idea is you just write, write, write very quickly every day. It's a timed writing. So you choose amount of time. Maybe it's 10 minutes. Maybe it's an hour. And you write. And the idea is you don't think too much. You just write, 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 write. And it just sort of, it's almost like building fluency for writing. You just start getting faster and faster and the writing becomes easier and easier. That's, that's actually a pretty nice way to start. And what's interesting is that, again, almost automatically, kind of naturally, your writing will start to improve as you do this. It'll just get a little better. The, somehow the process of doing that helps you improve. Zuzlina says, I've been learning English since, my, since I was nine years old, but the biggest progress is in the last three years. I learned almost nothing in school. It's so sad. Now it's natural. I enjoy learning it this way. Thank you for all you're doing. Yep, that's right. Good for you. Good for you. Right now I'm sitting next to an Englishman. Should I talk to him? Yeah, you could say hello. Why not? Yeah, Sergey says, I have lived in America for three years. I don't understand people who've been here 20 years and still don't speak English. Well, you know, it's just possible, and especially in places like America where you can, uh, people can find like their own little community of people who are from the same area, who speak their same language. Like Spanish speakers do this a lot because there's so many. Then they don't have to learn English because they have, or Chinese people do this sometimes and Okay. Yeah, uh, MG says, what's your opinion about Friends, the Friends TV series? It contains a lot of conversational vocab. What do you think? Uh, yeah, it's okay. I, I, it probably is okay. Uh, I haven't watched Friends in a long time. The only problem, sometimes I don't like the sitcoms. Situation comedy is what that means. Because they, I don't know, the jokes sometimes are a little, might be a little difficult to understand. Um, in some ways, I think dramas are better than comedies. But I think, you know, a lot of people have used Friends and like it. So if you like, just try it. If you like it, it's fine. Okay, I've been, Tule says, I can understand what people in English, what people say in English, but I can't speak it out. Can you tell me the reason why? Well, that's good news. You can understand people. That's really good. So now you just got to get over that. You know, there's kind of almost an emotional thing and there's like a little, little wall you have to get over to start speaking more and more. And so just start getting, finding some conversation partners and you'll start getting better and better. If you can understand that well, you're in good shape. You're going to be okay. Oh, Shakespeare. Osma says, because Shakespeare is very hard to understand alone. I want it from you, AJ. It's very under, yeah, become easy with you. The problem with Shakespeare, the reason I'm, I'm probably not going to do it is it's not modern English. So they're, they're definitely, it's just... 
it's just too different than what we do. So we're not really going to learn useful English for now. I mean, it's great art, but it's just not so great for... There's just so many other books we can read that use modern English that'll be much more helpful to you. So that's why... You know, even for me, some some Shakespeare, you know, I've got to read it kind of slowly and figure out, like, what are they saying? Uh, just because it's some of the words uh, and the style of the writing is just uh, fairly different, you know, so different from our modern. Now, when you get to more like, uh, you know, 1800s, that's okay, usually. Even late 1700s. But when you start getting back to farther than that, the English changes and becomes... Uh, too different, I think. Uh, what's your opinion about the gold list method of language learning? I don't know what that is. I don't know. <laughs> okay, here we go. Michaela says, Hi, Jay. Will you do your live shows during the challenge? Yes. On a regular basis? Yes. Or will you be less live because you're doing this challenge yourself? No, no, I'll still do it. I have to fit around this, so I'll, I'm still going to do it. In fact, it's an opportunity for us to all, you know, be more motivated. So every day during the challenge, it's four months, uh, you know, I'll be talking about it. Maybe not every night, but uh, a lot of those nights, at least in the question and answer part, I'll ask you how you're doing. We'll, I'll, I'll discuss my own progress. I'll discuss my own, you know, if I have problems or difficulties or I'm, you know, I'll just be open and honest about my, how I'm feeling about my own. It'll be up and down, right? Some days up and some days down. And I'll share that and you can share yours and all of us can stay motivated together. And again, the idea is that after four months, by the end of November, we'll all make a nice big improvement. That's why we're doing it. Yeah, so Leo... Bomer says, I read half of the book, The One Minute Manager, you suggested. It's amazing. Thank you for this piece of advice. Yeah, exactly. It's a great book about management. Very easy book, very short book, but excellent. It's really got great management um, advice if you're gonna, if you know, managing people. Uh, I remember when I had to be a manager that I read that book. It helped me because I didn't know what to do. The One Minute Manager. I bet Ken Blanchard, I believe, is the guy's name. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, MG says... You talked about the Q movement before. What's going on with it? Big things happening. So I kind of stopped talking about Q for a while because I just felt nothing was happening, right? And it was just kind of this really, um, all these political details, which for maybe for me are a little interesting in America, but for you guys, probably a bit boring. <laughs> and uh, But there's some big things happening now with they're arresting this guy, Epstein, uh, about... It's, you know, it's about them abusing children, sex with children, uh, taking children. There's some, and it's connected to, you know, like Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton, and, and other people very high up. So we're going to see some big things happening in the next few months. So I probably will start doing some podcasts about Q again because uh, it's getting exciting now. Ah, uh, blue says blue bulls says, "What should I do to stop translating in my head?" I think getting a lot of repetition is helpful for that. So, like repeating the same audio many, many times. So, in the first few times, you're going to translate, probably, right? You hear the new words and you kind of automatically switch it to your language. But after you hear it fifty times, 
you know, a lot of the words are kind of deep in your brain and you you find you don't need to translate a lot of them anymore. E even already for Japanese, there are a few words like this for me where I hear the word, it's just kind of automatic. I know what it means. I don't need to translate it to English. But there are a lot of other words which I'm still kind of have to remind myself, like, what is that? And I have to think in English. So, but the more repetition you get of those audios, the less you need to translate. So that's why I think it's, a, it's very good to try, you know, my goal with not everything I listen to, but, but a lot of the, like the main things I'm listening to, like stories and things, my goal is to repeat each one about a hundred times. Not in one day, obviously, that's going to take a few months, <laughs> probably four months at least, four or five months. But uh, I'd like to get a, a, about 100 repetitions of each one. And then there's other stuff. I'll just read it one time or listen to it one time. But, but kind of I have some main things that I'm focusing on where I want, like every day I try to repeat it at least a couple times. And that helps a lot, I find. Yeah, Catch-22 is a good book for your book club. It is a good book. Yep. All right. Julia Takita says, You don't like Nato me either. What about... Oh, Misoshiro of Daikon. It's fermented food. Uh, Misoshiro. I'm trying to think if I've had it. I like miso. Miso, I guess, is technically fermented. I like miso. Miso soup, miso flavored things. Daikon, not so much. Daikon is a radish. Not particularly. <laughs> Yeah, motion. He'll be he'll be blocked when I when I'm finished. He'll be blocked. Okay, so Albert Demani with a with a follow up. Do I have to repeat what I listened to, or do just just keep listening? So again, like you know. Choose certain things that you want to repeat a lot that's helpful. You get that deep learning. If you're listening to my mini stories, I find the mini stories are a good thing to repeat a lot, you know, like the lessons. And then there's some other stuff like a podcast, for example, maybe you only listen one time, but there's a new one coming the next day and the next day and the next day. So you can kind of have a mix. Sometimes you get tired of repeating, you know, and, uh, your brain gets tired. So then go do some new stuff. And sometimes the new stuff is makes you tired because it's more difficult uh, and you want to go back to something you know very well because it's a little easier. So you can kind of go back and forth like that. One second, guys. Keep on typing those questions. All right. <laughs> One second, guys. Okay. Keep on typing those questions. All right. Just blocking that guy. All right. Okay. That guy's blocked now. All righty. Here we go. Um,. And guys, please type in English. If you're going to type in the chat, English. This is a site for English learning. Let's use English. What does AJ refer to in your name? Alan. Alan J. Is my name, my full name. Oh, Abra says, I've been learning English for five years every day, three to four hours a day. Nice. My friend told me I should be speaking like a native speaker. My English, but my English is good. Is something wrong with me? Nothing's wrong with you. You're fine. You know, does your friend speak like a native speaker? If not, maybe your friend doesn't know what he's talking about. It's interesting that it's always the people who 
<laughs> people who, who criticize like that, that usually they're not as good as you are. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Mohammed Taha says, do you know German courses that use your method like Oscar in Spanish? I think there might be one. I can't remember the name. Uh, Link also has some mini stories. I am sure they have in German. So you can try Link, L-I-N-G-Q. I'm using their Japanese. I'm using them for Japanese. So I'm sure they have German. So that that's, and they have mini stories. So yes, you could do that. Yeah, there you go. Cleefy says, after a silent period for one year focusing on listening and reading, I started this day to make conversations with some friends. I noticed my speaking gets better, but still not perfect. Well, it's not going to be perfect. It's okay. Cleefy, that's great. So now just start, you know, you've had your night, your time of really focusing on listening a lot and, um, and reading. So now you get out and enjoy talking. Get out, enjoy, and communicating, and focus on communication, not perfection, right? Focus on being perfect. I'm not perfect in English. I make mistakes. I don't know. Sometimes you guys notice. Sometimes you don't. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll be start a sentence, and then I'll change my mind what I'm saying, and then maybe the grammar doesn't match or something. You know, it happens sometimes. So native speakers do this too. So don't worry about it. Because everybody makes mistakes, especially in speaking. You know, writing's a little different because in writing you're supposed to go back and check it and check it again and check it again if it's if it's important. But in speaking, you know, people use all kinds of there are lots of things in English that are very commonly said that are not that don't follow a grammar book. Put it that way. Like, you know, I speak English fast. I mean technically you should probably say quickly. Right. But people say that all the time. Learn fast. I learn fast. I, you know, there's there's lots of things where people are using uh, it's the grammar and everything becomes very loose and relaxed in normal speaking. So don't worry about making mistakes. It's fine. And, you know, follow up here from uh, Rip Syme. What's your advice for people that are afraid of making mistakes while they're talking? Well, you just you just make a lot and then it, it sort of helps. You got to just push yourself to just focus on the communication. I think that's the main thing. Just like when you're listening, you focus on the topic, right? You're focusing on the topic and enjoying the topic. Well, when you're talking, enjoy the conversation, enjoy the communication, the connection with other people. And instead of analyzing your English, okay? Don't be worried about your performance and analyzing, oh, did I use the right grammar? Did I <laughs> did I remember the right vocabulary words? I mean, that's no fun. That's no. That's not interesting. That's not communication. Don't do that, okay? You don't need to analyze yourself every time you speak. Just get out, you know, if, you, if the other person understands what you're trying to say, then it's successful. You did a, you had a successful communication. It, it doesn't matter if you use the wrong verb tense or something, okay? I mean, you can improve that stuff gradually, but just enjoy the communication. Oh, Filippo said, what's the difference between quick and fast or quickly and fastly? Fastly is not even a word. I really don't get completely. Well, it's adverb or adjective. Technically, adverb describes a verb, you know, how you do something. So quickly, like if you speak quickly, right? Quickly is describing how you speak. So technically, you're not supposed to use an adjective for that. But people do it all the time. <laughs> I do it. Okay, so now this is an interesting question. How to understand native speakers who talk much faster than you and have bad pronunciation? I understand up to 100% of your speech, but when I listen to other podcasts, I understand 10 to 20%. Well, that's quite a drop. So there are two issues. Issue number one is vocabulary, and issue number two might be the, like you said, the speed or their pronunciation. For vocab, 
audiobooks will help you a lot and just it just takes time for the speed you know again the more you listen to faster english speaking your brain will speed up but it takes some time so yes it can be helpful to find somebody who speaks very quickly someone like tony robbins he's a fast speaker he's a fast speaker and so find a few speeches from Tony and listen to them every day. And in the beginning, you might say, oh, it's so fast, I can't understand. But after a few weeks, it'll seem better. Your brain will learn to understand more quickly. You're kind of training your brain to work faster when you listen. Now, bad pronunciation. Um, well, that's harder. That's more difficult. It, and I'm not sure what you mean by that. You know, if some people do, if they have very strong, there's a very strong accent of some kind uh, or like just they're really bad, you know, maybe they're not, they're using like really kind of, I don't know what to say, uneducated kind of English, like tons of slang and just horrible pronunciation. And well, maybe I, ha maybe I couldn't understand them either. It might, it might be hard for a lot of people. Like, uh, what's that? What's that TV show? Honey Boo Boo. <laughs> <laughs> something like that okay <laughs> probably most people have difficulty understanding it okay so don't feel bad <laughs> uh, understanding Beatles songs help me in my vocab I will say this about the Beatles they do their songs are a little more direct and clear you know, a lot of songs are quite difficult to understand and yeah, Beatles songs are probably a little more clearly pronounced and a little more direct in meaning so but you know overall better to read or listen to audiobooks or podcasts you'll just get more from the same time and I like the Beatles Raquel says, have you been to South America? No, I have not. I've only been to, I've been to Central America. I've been to Guatemala and Honduras um, and Mexico. But I have, that's, as, that's the furthest south I've gone in the Americas. But I would like to do, I mentioned before, I have this romantic idea since I saw the Motorcycle Diaries movie, this romantic idea of traveling around South America, you know, like that. Just visiting a lot of countries, taking several months, and uh, I don't know, Brazil and Argentina, like maybe see, see them all, you know. But I don't know if I'll have the time to do, to, to do that, but sort of a romantic trip. I like it. I like the idea of it. Good excuse to work on my Spanish more. Konsam says, why don't you come to India? Please open your institution in India. I will, I will, I will go back to India someday. I like India. Yeah, in terms of my speaking speed, this is my natural speaking speed. So I'm not trying to talk slowly for you. You know, this is just how I speak. It's my normal. I talk to everybody this speed, <laughs> okay? Unless I get excited. If I get really excited, I might speed up. But normally, I talk to my mom this way. I talk to my dad. I talk to everybody this way. You know, but I'm from the South in the United States, the Southeast. And in general, people in the South talk a little more slowly. Kind of famous for that, for having a slower, well, slower pace of life, really, in general. More relaxed life, being more relaxed. People from the Southeast in the United States... They're kind of the stereotype. They're famous for this speaking more slowly, being more relaxed. So that's why. It's not, I'm not trying to talk super slowly for you. <laughs> okay. It's, it's a natural speaking speed. It's just it's a little probably it is a little bit on the slower side. And there are other people who speak more quickly naturally. My friend Joe speaks faster. But he's from he was raised in New York, in New York City. And they have the opposite. You know, they're famous for talking very quickly. Oh, Alam Ho says, what's the brand of your microphone? What do you suggest for re recording podcasts? Uh, this is a Rode, R-O-D-E. Let's see if I... 
see it upside down there. Very nice, actually. I've used Shure, S-H-U-R-E, before. Those are decent. Uh, there's a bunch of good ones out there, but I like this one. This is a USB mic just directly into the computer. I don't have to do any, you know, mixing or anything. It works very well. The quality's great. I love this little arm I've got. You know, this is a, what is this thing? Blue. Blue, B-L-U-E, the arm. This arm that it's on is from Blue. It attaches to my desk. Uh, so I've tried many different things. I've had a desk, something that just sits on my desk. And this is my favorite that I've done. You know, I've been podcasting for like uh, 13 years now. And this little setup is really my favorite. It works really well. So yeah, Rode, R-O-D-E, Rode. Let's see if there's a number on it. This is NT-USB. It's their USB mic. So for podcasters, there you go. Oh, DeLong asks, Kayo says, is there a difference between spoken English on the street by those who don't go to school and educated people? Yes, yes, very much there can be. Absolutely, there can be a very big difference of someone, uh, you know, let's say me, I'm probably in the middle. I, I'm not trying to talk like a professor or anything. You can meet people who talk, you know, more like college professors who they're they might speak more slowly and they're trying to use you know maybe larger vocabulary words and then you can you know people on the street and then this kind of so-called street english of less educated people it also depends on different groups so like i mentioned honey boo boo <laughs> you know some of you guys know this reality show uh i can't remember where they're from like florida or south georgia or something but they're like these you know really country people right and then you've got like, you know, inner city and they're going to speak differently. And then you've got it. It's different if it's south or north or city or countryside. So, yeah, there can be quite a lot of differences. And then each country is different. So you're going to find this in each country. So in England, you're going to find the same thing, right? You're going to find some London accents, which are we, we, you might say uneducated or street. Right. And there are going to be several of those that are maybe sound quite different. And then you got the kind of very, you know, upper class Oxford, which I can't do, but, you know, kind of the famous Oxford, you know, very upper class British accent. And you've got a kind of like a neutral middle standard one. And overall, the neutral one is the best because it's the most common. It's the one you hear most of the time on TV, for example. So that's why it's most useful because everybody knows it. Everybody understands it. Good question, though. All right, a couple more. Yeah, like Farhad says, sometimes we hear native speakers pronounce words in other ways than the dictionary pronunciation. Why? Because the dictionary is not a rule book. The grammar books are not rule books. See, this, these people in schools, these professors, they, they're completely backwards. They don't understand how language works. The real language is the one people speak. That's the real language. It changes sometimes. These books they write about are just trying to describe the real language. But these people, these professors, they think it's a rule book. So they think, well, if they're not following the rule book, they're saying it wrong. No, the book's wrong. So there are, you know, these things change with time and different groups can pronounce some words differently. You know, one of the, the famous examples is especially especially right it's pronounced es especially especially that's the dictionary definition you know pronunciation especially there's no k or x sound in there however you will hear especially americans probably most americans pronounce it with the k sound and they say especially ek, ek, especially right it sounds like there's a k or an x in there that's i say it like that usually why because i don't know something about the combination of the sounds, putting the K in there feels more natural, feels easier to say for us. Okay, so this is how then the pronunciation changes over time. And that is now the common pronunciation. So they should put that pronunciation in the dictionary now. 
They should put in the dictionary as official pronunciation because it is now. And this happens with many different things. As I said, there's kind of gradually over time, people are using adjectives to describe verbs, right? This is becoming more and more and more common. Who knows? Maybe 10 years from now, 20 years from now, it might become the standard way of speaking. It might become accepted by most people. And then, well, then the book's wrong because it changed, right? Just we, we know that changes, right? Again, how do we know? We can look at Shakespeare, England. Shakespeare was English. He spoke English. He wrote in English. But we can look at English from Shakespeare's time, and we can see that now it's very different. The language changed a lot in a few hundred years, right? It's the language of Shakespeare is not spoken in England. In England, it's different. In America, it's different. In Australia, it's different. Nobody speaks like Shakespeare anymore. It changed over time. This happens, right? So you can't just write a rule book and say, this is now how you speak English. These are all the rules. This is the pronunciation, and it can never change. That's not how it works. Languages are alive and they change and grow over time. And we, we've seen this clearly. You want to go back even more, you can read Beowulf, which in, in like Old English, you can read Chaucer, and these which are older than Shakespeare. And you can see even older versions of English, right? And you can see the change over time. And then you can read, you know, like, uh, you know, they, those 1800s, that time period. And then you can read Hemingway. And then you can now. And you can see there has been a change in many different things over time, including pronunciation and spelling. All these things have changed. How can I take part in the Camino de Santiago? Start in St. Jean. Uh, that's what most people do. You don't have to. You could start. Uh, Carol told me about, what's it called? I can't remember the name, but there's a... There's a section of the Camino. It's like two months long in France, across France. So you can walk all the way across France, then go to St. Jean Pied de Port, which is a terrible French pronunciation. But anyway, that's how I say it. And then that starts the basically the Spanish Camino, which is called the Camino Frances. <laughs> and uh, anyway, you cross into Spain the first day, and then you walk across, and that takes about a month. There are many guidebooks in many languages for the Camino de Santiago. I highly recommend it. It's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful experience. Uh, IMG is asking about Kristen and Joe. What about your friends, Kristen and Joe? Do they have their just their Learn Real English course? I already finished it. Are they doing new courses? They're not doing anything new right now. They're busy. They're they both are working jobs also. So you know, I do this full time. They're doing it part time. So it's just that one course they have with with me. But they're doing well. They're doing very well. Still live in San Francisco. <laughs> Merrick with another question that I probably can't answer. I'm on vacation. I have one very important question. Is is there an ozone hole or not? Because I sunbathe the whole day. I don't like sunbathing oils too. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know if that's real or not. Ah, okay. Zuzlina with a recommendation for a movie in, in English accepted do you know this it's a crazy comedy i like the ending i haven't seen that one so check it out guys nasser says did the live did these live shows count for the challenge yeah it's all in english so every if you listen to the live shows that's an hour a free hour for everybody uh bro thank you he says just finished watching the one key to freedom Fantastic. Mahdi, please make, uh, please make a video about games to learn English. Yeah, I think there's a great, 
I think there's a great potential for video games and languages, but I think the technology is not quite good enough yet, you know, for there to be an interaction and everything. But I think eventually that could be a very cool thing. Yeah, like Paul, for this is an example of a, a evolving language. Why in English are you adopting Italian words like ballerina, barista, ciao? We adopt words from lots of languages. Yes, constantly this happens. All languages do this. Japanese ha adopt English words, right? They there are a good decent number of words from English, uh, and a few from other languages that I know that uh, the Japanese have taken from other languages. So this just happens. The people. These languages cross connect, you know, like the word for bread in Japanese is pan, which uh, comes from Portuguese or Spanish, maybe Italian, too. So it just happens. I'm right. I'm guessing Italian has um, some English words, too, right? Maybe not. I also have to remember that, you know, English is, you know, influenced by Latin and uh, French. So we got a lot of words that come from French and Latin and therefore are connected to all those other languages. Antonio Torres, are there earthquakes in Osaka? Do you fear them? Yes, there are earthquakes and yes, they make me very nervous. I don't like them. <laughs> yeah, it's a little scary when they happen. Okay, I guess it's almost time to go. I'm going to go back and start listening to Japanese. Uh, when will the business club start? I'll think about it. I am just, I'm going to be talking about in, uh, business topics. I just don't know. haven't decided if I'm going to do one specific day, like the same day every week, or just whenever. We'll see. And yes, Movie Club is coming Sunday. Okay, final question. For, I'll give it to back to, and I'm sorry, but I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Is it Dolange Kayo? Do you plan to teach English to your kids? Yeah. Or you put them in an environment where English is spoken like the USA. Well, it's just we're doing, we're going to do it's something called one parent, one language. It's just the easiest way to do it. So I will speak to the babies in English. My wife will speak to the babies in Japanese. And they'll just learn naturally the way all babies learn. So we don't, I, I, I mean, I won't be teaching. There won't be any uh, necessary teaching of the basic language, just just what it's just what every parent does you know just communicating with them now we will be homeschooling so i will be you know doing teaching them in general all topics and i'll teach them in english and my wife will do the japanese part all right well i guess that's it for now thank you everybody i have to go take care of babies and i got a long night and not much sleep already so I'll be listening to Japanese, trying to stay awake. <laughs> so you guys go off and uh, listen to some more English. Get ready for our challenge. I'm quite excited about it. I'm already getting much more motivated. You all are helping me be motivated. I think about you guys. I know you all will be working hard and increasing your listening. I know you'll. some of you will be doing a huge number of hours in English. Uh, some of you already said you do 10 hours a day, 12 hours a day. You just... So I know I already know some of you are going to do more than I can do, but it's still I like it because it's I find it inspiring. It's motivating. Saying, "Wow, they're doing ten hours. That's that's great. I I can try to do an extra hour. I got to try to do a little more." And four months is a nice amount of time. It's not too long where we're going to become exhausted, but it's long enough where you know four months we can make a nice big improvement. All of us. Four months of making a big effort to increase your listening and, and reading. You can make a really big improvement with your English in that time. 
and uh, it's right before the holidays. You know, we'll finish at the end of November. It's kind of a nice time, and we can relax maybe a little in December, and then come back in the new year, and we'll start another challenge, which might involve some speaking too. That's my idea. All right, so until then, as always, join my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. I will see you tomorrow for the book club, Brave New World, and Sunday for the movie club. Commit, don't quit at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Go to EffortlessEnglishClub.com.